Hi folks, welcome to another episode of NYC CNC. Today I want to work on uh, showing some lathe alignment techniques. Um, like so many things here, I've actually just sort of started experimenting with this, so this is more of you following along with me as I learn and uh, less of the expert here uh, showing you the way. But um, one of the things that's talked about a lot on the forums and certainly seems well respected is a method for spindle alignment called Rolly Dad's method, and it seems to be the um, so it seems to have the consensus for being just the best way to go about checking your spindle or measuring your spindle alignment and the directions aren't that complicated but um, like many people sometimes I find that it's easier to watch a video than read uh, the instructions so I thought I would tackle it here and uh, see if we can figure out how my lathe is aligned out the box. This is my micro, uh, Micromark 7x14. I've had it about a year now and I've started to, uh, you know, become very comfortable with it and now, especially as I'm working on some uh, steam engine projects and such, care a little bit more about the precision and uh, want to at least get a feel for, for where my lathe is and if I want to make any adjustments or not. First, a quick note about the tools and the setup that I'm using here. I've taken off the compound slide, so I, or excuse me, the yeah, the compound slide, so I only have the cross slide. Um, on the carriage saddle and I've cleaned off my uh, my ways in the bed just to make sure everything's clean. I've got my three jaw chuck and in it I've got a piece of half inch drill rod. This is quite cheap. I think Enco sells it for somewhere between five and six bucks for a three foot section and it's great for this project because an important thing about Rolly Dads and trying to keep it simple is making sure you have a piece of uh, stock material that is the same diameter. It doesn't necessarily have to be perfectly straight. Um, neither The material doesn't have to be perfectly straight, nor does it have to be chucked perfectly straight, but it, it is easier if your piece is the same diameter. So I had considered using a piece of one inch uh, aluminum pipe, which is, happens to be polished and has a nice surface, and I thought that that would be better because since it's a pipe, it won't sag a little bit like this drill rod will under its own weight, but this pipe varies um, in diameter both along it and at different points in the uh, in the diameter by a few thou, and it's just enough that um, frustrating enough that I think I'm going to keep it simple and use the drill rod. I've also got a magnetic magnetic dial indicator base here, which I've swapped my dial indicator with for the dial test indicator. This one happens to be by Fowler and most importantly is it's, the tick marks are half a thou, many of them are one thou. Um, I'm using the Rolly Dads method from gadgetbuilder.com and you can check out the, my webpage, the blog NYCCNC for all the information uh, and links here. It's sort of a abbreviated Rolly Dads method which um, is I think every bit as thorough but makes it a little bit easier. So um, the reason I like using this magnetic, magnetic base indicator and not something like this that I'm holding in my hand is that you're going to see in a second that you want to be able to adjust the vertical height on the dial test indicator and this little knob right here that's connected to this spring allows you to micro adjust the height without having to um, manipulate it by hand. It's much, much more precise. So the first step is to set your uh, magnetic base indicator uh, tool up and then get the dial test indicator aligned roughly so that it's perpendicular and about the right height and then I'll feed the compound in and you'll find the maximum point along the rod. Now, I've already been working on this so it'll be close to the zero point here. So it looks like that's about the maximum height. Now something I like to do now is just make sure you've still got enough play in the indicator and you can see I've still got about half of the dial face of movement. That's important. You don't want to be at the end of the range of your indicator and you'll need to adjust it accordingly if you are. So now what I want to do is move the dial so that it's currently on zero. So now I've got it zeroed up and then I'll rotate the chuck and this will measure the run out in, an, in the current spot. And so I'm going, I'm going to say, I'm going counting by tick marks here minus one and plus about four. So what I'll do is I'll put the 
move it till it's about one and a half, and then I'll re-zero this little guy. And the idea here is you want it to have an equal amount of plus and minus range of movement. So now I'm about negative two and change, and plus just under two. So I'll go back a hair. There we go, negative two, plus two. So now, in theory, I've got the dial test indicator sort of centered such that the movement above and below uh, the axis on the runout is equal. Now, what I want to do is, without disturbing anything else, is move the carriage all the way down. And if you can see, I made a mark with a Sharpie right there, which is a nine inch distance from the first measuring point. The distance doesn't matter. You want it to be some, you know, some distance away. I chose nine just because it's simple here for a next step. Okay, so now what we're going to do is take our the measurement of the offset. So at the zero point, I'm going about going about seven tick marks down, and then on the high side, I'm going. 10 tick marks. The 5 there is because these are all half a foul ticks, but 10 tick marks up and 7 tick marks down. So that means there's a range of, excuse me, so then what you do is you take the 10 high and you subtract the 7 low. The reason being is that you don't care, you do care that the, di the diameter is consistent, but you don't care if it's chucked um, such that it's sort of wobbling. What you care about is the delta. So if I'm going 10 high, but I'm only but I'm going seven low. What that tells me is you do ten minus seven and you get three, which means I'm only three tick marks off. And since these are half a thou um, tick marks, that's only a thou and a half, which across nine inches is is very. Actually, I take that back. You you take the ten plus ten and the negative seven. Subtract the, the, the uh, excuse me, add the positive 10 and the negative 7, which gives you 3. Then you divide that by 2, which means I'm 1.5 ticks. And since these are only half a thou ticks, that means uh, I'm only about a thou, uh, I'm, you know, less than a thou, perhaps, you know, 7 tenths of a thou, which I'm suspicious that it's actually that accurate. Uh, but I think that's uh, certainly what the indicator is telling me. Now, the reason I went over 9 inches was I can use a graphing calculator here to make a quick calculation, which is that if I move over nine inches, and in that distance I'm only off by one thou, which is actually, according to my readings, a little bit high, then that shows that the angle is 0 .0064, um, which, is, which is incredibly minute. And when you uh, use your right triangle math to figure out how far off that is when you're only moving one inch, it's something like, you know, one-tenth of one that, which is far more precise uh, than, you know, certainly I am as a uh, machinist here. So um, next step would be to, to measure the horizontal alignment. Here we are obviously measuring the vertical. So you would just simply move the indicator up, push it up against the side here, and see how the spindle alignment is um, sort of from left to right. Thanks, everyone.